If you want to be great, you must accept the responsibility that comes with it. The responsibility that comes with it is that you must overcome some great trials to become great. You want to be a leader, then you have to learn to follow. If you want to become great, then you must also know great failure so that you can identify great success. You must also face moments alone, moments that's your personal arena, trials that God allows into your life to reveal what you're really made of. So another year has come and gone, and a lot of us are the same place we were last year. What the f are you waiting on? We sleep one third of our fucking lives. And we think we can take fucking days off. We think we have the right to sit back and give ourselves fucking options on which way we're gonna go in life. Am I gonna run today? Am I gonna work out today when it's Christmas? It's New Year's. It's my birthday. Do you think time gives a fuck that it's Christmas? That it's New Year's, that it's your birthday. You're giving yourself too many options. Let me tell you one thing. Time is running out. You keep on sitting around wondering what the you want to do. You're just gonna run out of time. So make sure you do one thing. Stop the fucking crowd. They may take time off, but you can't afford to. When you face something real, something genuine, something challenging, you find out what you're made of. And everything that you face must also face you. And in you, you have a toolkit. You have your will. You have your determination. You have your faith. You have your past experiences to build from. When we encounter adversity and opposition, you keep it pushing. A lot of people done sacrifice for you to be in this moment. Knowing that a cat's mother had worked for them to be in that situation. Knowing that a coach has sacrificed to put them in that situation. Teachers believed in them, put them in that situation. And cats came in every single day and treated it like it was nothing. I'm talking about what will you do with the vehicle that you've been blessed with every single day to become a better man. That's it. Never give up and you should never quit because there is never going to be something that comes up against you that you are not personally prepared to face. Because this is your arena and God never puts you in an arena that he doesn't accompany you into. Here's what I discovered that happens to you in life, that you will go through things and while you're going through them, you can't understand why it's happening to you. But after you go through it, you get back and you look at it and you say, oh, now I understand why I needed that lesson. If you want to know something about yourself, sit on your bed one night and say, what's one thing I'm doing wrong that I know I'm doing wrong that I could fix that I would fix? You meditate on that, you'll get an answer. And it won't be one you want, but it'll be the necessary one. It is not the critic who counts, nor the man who points out how the strong man stumbles or where the doer of deeds could have done them better. The credit belongs to the man who is actually in the arena, whose face is marred by dust and sweat and blood, who strives valiantly, who errs, who comes up short again and again, who spends himself into a worthy cause, who at the best knows, in the end, the triumph of high achievement, and who at the worst, if he fails, at least fails while daring greatly. So this is his place. She'll never be with those who are cold and timid souls who neither knew victory nor defeat. It's hard. Easy is not an option. It's hard living. Life is hard. See, it's hard when when you are 49 years old and working on a job for 17 years and they come in and tell you 
if you're finished and give you one week severance pay, and you got to start all over again. It's hard when you're married and raising children and your children are crawling and your husband dies unexpectedly. It's hard handling just the tragedies of life. It's hard. If you want to be great, you have to be willing to risk it. But when you risk it, understand, you have the skill set to win. And if you fail, you only fail to realize that that's a learning opportunity and a moment. It's your moment. Don't throw it away. Don't walk away. Never give up. To those of us who are living, we have an obligation to live our lives to the absolute fullest. Life is one big tug of war, and you don't win that tug of war by pushing the rope. You have to pull that mother. And a lot of times you have to pull yourself through life. This morning, I did not want to get up, so I had to pull my ass out of bed. But guess what? The more and more I got into that run, each step into that run, I started gaining more and more confidence. But to gain that confidence, you have to be willing to pull yourself out of bed, pull yourself out of a funk, pull yourself out of whatever the life is throwing at you to gain that confidence. When you're working at your dream, somebody said the harder the battle, the sweeter the victory. Oh, it's sweet to you. It's good to you. Why? See, when, you, when it's hard and there's a struggle, see, what you become in the process is more important than the dream. That's far more important. The kind of person you become, the character that you built, the courage that you develop, the faith that you're manifesting. You knew it was hard, but you did it hard. Your mind has to be stronger than your feelings. Your feelings keep you in bed. Your mind tells you, get up. You may not feel qualified, you don't think you have the talent, the odds are against you. You wouldn't have that opportunity if you weren't already equipped. It's in you, but you have to call it out. You have to start blessing yourself. You'll be tempted to talk about all the reasons why you're not able. It's too big. You don't have the resources. You come from the wrong family. Oh, don't curse yourself. great at. There's lots of hierarchies to attempt to climb, and if you fail in one, go try in another. But the point is, you're still trying to aim for the top, and what the hell are you going to do if you don't try to aim for the top? You know, flap about uselessly and whine about your life? It's not helpful. It'll just make you miserable. You're not reliable to anyone. You can't help out in a crisis. I don't care what you're gonna do, but go out there and make something of yourself for God's sake. Be an honest person and work and get to the top of whatever it is that you wanna to get to the top of. Stand up for yourself like a respectable human being and be a bit of a light on the world instead of a blight. There's nothing people can say, nothing they can do that can keep you from your purpose. And yes, there may be seasons of disrespect where it looks like they're getting the upper hand, but your time is coming. The meal is being prepared. You can trust the faithfulness of God. Decide to live your fantasy. See, in life, you can go through life, you can come up with reasons or you can come up with results. You can come up with excuses or you can come up with achievements. You can go through life blaming or you can come up with solutions. The choice is in your hands, satisfaction or despair. We can choose that. I will try 100 times to get up and if I fail 100 times, if I fail and I give up, do you think that I'm ever gonna get up? No. But if I fail, I try again and again and again. For as long as I try, there's always that chance of getting up. Now, ladies and gentlemen, that's, that's what most people miss out of life.
You've got to be willing to risk. If you're not willing to risk, you can't grow in life. Have a vision of the person you could become and to reach the pearly gates as it were, see who you could have been, contrast it with who you actually are and be disappointed by the gap between them. And I love chasing that. I think it's a beautiful chase. But what I hope you guys will do, if you ever find yourself at the pearly gates disappointed in how much farther you could have gone, to simply ask one question of yourself every day. Did I give it my all today? If you took on all the responsibility you could take on, and you faced everything that you needed to face, who would you be? And how would the world transform around you? Wondering why other people are successful is the refuge of losers. It's a loser mentality. It's a loser occupation. It's a, it's a, it's a loser practice. Because you're wondering why other people are successful. Like, who gives a f You can say you think it sucks, but to spend time wondering why someone is successful and hating on someone oh. being successful, it doesn't do any good. If your life is a series of, yes, I did, you've won. You've won. Guys, the struggle is guaranteed. The struggle is guaranteed. The struggle is guaranteed. The success is not. And like the thing that I beg you guys is to have the guts to fail at something that you love. And when you are on the mud, on your face, and people are laughing, the I told you so's are coming out, that you remember one simple fact. You loved what you were doing and you left it out on the field. What the f else is there? What the f else is there? What more can you ask of yourself than to really try to really say, I give a sh about this? That's the life to live. That's the life. Like to say, I care about this. It matters. It gives me purpose. I'm going to fight for this. This is a group of people I want to serve. And it turns out that if you face things, it turns out that if you face things that you can put up with a lot more than you think you can put up with, and you can do it without becoming corrupted. You can also find every excuse as to why you won't make it. You can find every reason if you look for it as to why you won't make it. But at the end of the day, there's going to be two groups of people. And one group is going to be a lot bigger than the other. The one group is going to get told that they can't do it. And instead of fighting and instead of working and instead of, you know, saying, well, that I'm not willing to accept that. Those people are going to just take it. And that's what society's counting on. Society is counting on you giving up. Then there's gonna be a smaller group. And the smaller group is gonna be the group that says, hey, you know what? Um, I, I hear what you're saying, but I'm not willing to accept that. I'm not willing to just roll over and take what I'm given. I'm not willing to stop trying because you say that I can't fucking do it. That's what you say, that doesn't mean it's the truth. And I'm gonna go all the way out every day. And look, you're not gonna hit it every day. There's gonna be days where you're off. There's gonna be days where you're weak. But if that day, instead of bullshitting yourself, instead of saying I wasn't weak today, what are you talking about? If that day you own it and you say, yeah, I was weak today and I'm not gonna be weak tomorrow, but I'm not afraid to face that. I'm not afraid to look in the mirror and say today was a bad day, that I didn't make myself proud today, but that shouldn't diminish who you are. known fact that a new day begins at midnight is still dark. In fact, at nighttime, you can't see things that are being done, but it is promised that everything that is done in the dark will come to the light.
That's not just in a negative sense, and we often think of that as a threat. That whatever mistakes that I've made, failures that I've had, will come out and people will see them. No, the work you put in at night when no one's watching, the hard work, your dedication, that you do when no one else is around, when there's no applause to be given, no claps, no one is paying attention to what you've done on your own and by yourself, that too will come to the light. And all the work that you put forth will show up, and those who weren't there will see your name in lights. And I'm saying that if you know anybody that had some goal, some dream, something they wanted to do, and they did it, then I'm saying that you know in your heart that if someone has done it, then you can do it. It's possible. Not what might be, not what could be, not what should be, what is, okay? And we have to make decisions based upon what is, not what we wish it was. I want to tell you this. We're waiting for somebody to show up for our life. We're waiting for somebody to do something for our life. We're waiting for the perfect time. We're waiting for the sun to come in the middle of our storm. We're waiting for the perfect conditions to start. And I want to tell you right now, when you're serious about change, I want to tell you right now, when you're serious about growth, I want to tell you right now, when you have to make something happen for your life, you got to stop waiting, you got to start creating. Until I win. Not over till I get through. Not over till I get over. Not over till I get what I want. Door can't open today, look out. I'm gonna come back and take the hinges off. You've got to have that kind of courage, that type of determination. If you wanna make it happen, it's you. But you've got to take personal responsibility to make it happen. You can't wait for the storm to end. You can't wait for the opportunity to come. You can't wait for the forgiveness to show up. You can't wait for the closure. How many of us, we have spent our whole entire life waiting, waiting on something that we can create ourselves. Obedience is better than sacrifice, right? But the first thing we do as people, we judge the level of sacrifice without first being obedient. The Bible says a man is as he thinketh. So how you are, the energy that you project from your mind is what is what you get. And so that's what the law, that's why the law of attraction works that way. It's because whatever you project, that signal, that's the return has to come that way. See, and the difference between successful people and non-successful people is what goes on in between here. They're not smarter than you. God don't love them more than he loved you. It's just that they thought themselves into a different position. But mastery comes through deep focus, patience, and persistency. One of the real reasons we don't do the things that frighten us is because we are afraid of being judged. And so to become fearless, why not find some time every day to practice becoming fearless? When you make a commitment, when you make it important, when you decide I'm gonna do it no matter what, life changes for you. See, most people don't keep their commitments to their commitments. That's why they lead lives of poverty, lives of misery, lives of unhappiness. Socrates said the uncommitted life isn't worth living. So part of what you must do, whatever commitment, whatever covenant you make with God while you're here. Okay? You understand what it's like to have people tell you that you can't do it. And I'm gonna tell you something, and this is the fucking truth. This is the reality, and if you don't like it, I don't give a fuck. The truth is this. If you're willing to pay the price, and you're willing to do the work, and you're willing to take the time, and you're willing to consistently get up when you are knocked down over and over and over again, which is going to happen to you if you're pursuing anything outside of the norm, you can make it here. Fight. 
go down swinging. And I'll tell you, if you fight with all you have, more often than not, you won't go down at all. You have to make a decision in your life. And this is, this is a decision, and I would say that it's a voluntary element of faith because it isn't exactly evidence-based. It's a useful move of faith to act as if you love being. And if you love something, then you want the best in it to flourish. And so maybe you decide deep in your soul that it would be better for you to act towards an end that makes everything that's good better. That that's the best way to live, to make everything that's good better. And maybe to restrict the development of everything that's malevolent and evil within yourself and in the broader world insofar as you're able to do that. And so I think that's an expression of love, is that because when you love something, you care for it. And the proper attitude towards being, I think, is care. So you got to start writing down everything you want and projecting it out into the universe because that's the law of attraction. That's how it works. You are your greatest remote control. Whatever you press, that, that has to return. If you want more people to smile at you, all you got to do is start smiling at more people. You want more people to shake your hand, you got to stick your hand out to more people. Everybody ain't going to shake it, but a whole lot of people will. That's the law of attraction. It's what you project. I'm telling you, man, it's, that's the game. If you can get that, folks, you change your whole life. It's time. It's time to get up. It's time to go after your goals. It's time for you to look around and see everything that you have and get dissatisfied. This is not it for me. I can't be settled for being good. I've got to be more. I've got to become more. And the only way you become more is that you get dissatisfied with what you have. The reason why you got another breath is so that you can go after something bigger than what you were. You're not here to waste time. Time is precious. Time doesn't get repeated. Man, you have to take advantage of it. You gotta realize there's a difference though between time and terms. You see, time is funny because time, if you sit there and you wait on the long game and say, one day it's just gonna be my turn. Your time, your talents, your abilities, your skills will have rotted. They will have sat there and wondered why you didn't sharpen those things. But if you go ahead and you play the short game and say, I'm not going to sit and simply wait. I'm not going to let play by somebody else's playbook. I'm going to look at eternally and look at myself and say, good is not enough. I need to be great. What are you, what are you saving for? What are you working toward? What kind of physical condition do you want to be in? What kind of relationships do you want to have? What skills are you trying to develop? And just like any leader, you have to explain to yourself the why. Everything you're going through is preparing you for what you ask God for. You just gotta quit tripping while you're in the process because the process is necessary. You may not see it now, but when he gets you on the other side of it, you're gonna see exactly why it went that way. And you're gonna be okay with it. But quit tripping during the process. We all fall down in life, guys. The question is who gets back up? Again, it's not the potential of the individual. It's not the genetics. It's the perseverance, the never say die attitude. If you constantly keep throwing shit against the wall, eventually something will stick, guys.
was born to be great. I desire to be great. I want to be great. I am more than anything anybody's ever told me. And this is not being narcissistic. It's not looking at myself as some exaggerated version of a perfect player I created on a game. Life is not my game. Me versus me, I gotta believe in me when no one else does. possibility that's within you that can well up the, the courage and the truth and the ability and the skill and, and, the, and the willingness to set things right, if you are willing to set them right, is more powerful than all of that. And so it's so interesting. It was, it was proof for me of an old saying, what you most want to be found will be found where you least want to look, essentially. And it's so interesting because it means that if you're willing to turn around and to stand up, say, and stand up straight and face the darkness, like fully what you discover at the darkest part is the brightest light and then not something that's so much worth discovering because there's going to be terrible darkness in your life and it's going to make you cynical and bitter and it could easily be that you're just not looking at it enough because if you looked at it enough and you didn't shy away and you brought everything you had to bear on it you'd find that there was more to you than there was to the horror You get one shot, one shot at this gig right here. Life, one life, that's all you've got. And regret in and of itself, it's worthless. It does nothing for you. In fact, the only valuable thing in regret is the lesson you learned. The knowledge that you gained. I've got to go after my goals, I've got to dream, I've got to believe, and then I've got to overcome those voices that get in your head from people that didn't mean you well. The people that told you you'll never be, Use that as motivation, use that as fire. When you stand in the shower and water is washing over your head and back, wash away every negative thought, every negative comment they've ever said about you. When you're sitting there and you think about the lost moments in life, honor them by getting up and taking your turn. It's your time. They lived their life so that you might have opportunities. There were sacrifices made to make you. Now honor that becoming a better you. Pull yourself together and quit tripping because you in the process. God is processing you. He ain't through with you. If he was through with you, you would not wake up in the morning. You may have lost and failed in one moment, but I promise you, what you learned in that defeat is a, it's like having that master's degree in life. I learned what not to do. Now I'm not going to regret the fact that I lost. Because I learned. And the most dangerous thing that you could have ever allowed to happen that uh, your enemy would ever never saw coming was the fact that you learned the value of you. Yeah. Now I know what I'm capable of. Now I know how close I was.